Hello, everybody. Welcome to this WBC talk. Now, this is May is the Mental Health Month awareness, and the WBC, the WBC CARES, the WBC University are working on this because we want you to be okay. This time, it's going to be mental health prevention, but it's the must. Let me first introduce Sochi Lagarda. She's the director of the WBC University, and she's been pushing. She knows almost everything about it. So if you need help, you know who to go to. Sochi, how are you? Thank you. But if I need help, then I call Dr. Silverman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now let me. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, Elia, of course, our champion to be here. I want to thank Anthony. Uh, it's very important that a manager is here because prevention is uh, in many ways in your hands. Okay, so the, the message uh, you are going to give to all the boxing community today is very important. And of course, Dr. Silverman, our expert and a pioneer in all these uh, programs uh, of prevention. Uh, I'm very proud of this program, and I think it's going to be one of the most important programs of okay. all the ones we've been making. Just one, just one. Prevention is everything, okay? Prevention can make a difference, a big difference in your life. So uh, with this, we begin, okay? And I thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let me introduce Dr. Sanford Silverman. He knows what to do in these cases. And of course, his point of view and recommendations will be great. He lives in a great place in Arizona. So doctor, how are you? Good, good, how are you doing? Thanks for, for being here with us. Sure. Next, it's Anthony McDonald's. Anthony has been working uh, with many uh, people from sports and he knows the importance of mental health and he promotes and he's very emphatic in this. So I think he's a guy that can give us, give us a recommendations and let us know that he's not spending or wasting money, but investing in it. Yep. How are you, Absolutely. Anthony? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for being here. I and appreciate last, the opportunity. Last but not but not least, Elia Garcia. It's our champion. He's a southpaw from Glendale, Arizona. So he lives really close to you, doctor. I think he yes. lives now in Phoenix. Yeah. He's a WBC Latino middleweight. And he also has a very impressive record of 15 wins, zero defeats but 12 knockouts. So he has powers on, his, on the hand. Playa, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good to have you here. Alaya, I think uh, I'm gonna ask you first. There are two points of view, as a person and as a fighter. What's the importance of mental health? Oh, uh, mental health, a hundred percent. You cannot compete. It don't matter how good of shape you're in. If your mind isn't ready, and if your yep. mind isn't strong, you're not yep. gonna, you're not, you're not gonna do anything. Um, as, as a brother, as a son, as a, as a, as a, as a father, as a son, you know, as a brother and as a husband. Um, mental health is everything. You know, if mentally you're not there and you can't you know you can't put your priorities right or you can't handle you know your own problems then there's no way you could handle anybody else and that's the biggest thing um you know mental health helps you in every every aspect that there needs to be what was that no no he said my name yeah. i'm sorry you have only, you just turned 20 years old, okay? And you have this perfect record that Victor was talking about. Uh, 
Thank you. You already, he already asked you about the importance. What do you think of the importance of mental health? But do you think, do you think if you wouldn't have the support of your manager supporting you, will you, would have you taken the decision on going on your own for mental health? Or it has been a work team with your doctors, your psychologists, your manager, who are convinced and who are guiding you to put a, to put an effort on your on this perfect almost perfect record that you have. Please let us. Uh, know. What do you think about so, this multidisciplinary team? Uh, hundred, all right, so boxing. They say a lot, a lot of people say boxing is a one man sport and I believe that's not true. It takes a whole team. Right. In my case, you know, I have I'm the fighter, but I have two trainers, you know, I have two doctors and I have one manager. One of my doctors, um, Dr. Silverman, helps me with my mental health and Anthony's the man that brought me to him. And um a hundred percent I wouldn't be where I am today without Anthony or Dr. Silverman because they had brought me to a different level that I've never and it's, it's a whole different level. And it opened my eyes to see a lot of, um, pro, you know, it's opened my eyes to see a whole, a whole nother world. And um, I could, I could see the progress and I could feel it. And this, uh, this is a huge reason to why I'm so successful. Will you recommend the fighters of your age, older fighters, younger fighters to begin with a mental health prevention programs doesn't matter if you are not diagnosed but do you think it has to be like uh like your physical preparation it it has to go by the hand yeah i would recommend it to everybody uh athlete or not but 100 percent, i believe fighters need it um they might need it a little bit more because we get punched in the you know we get punched in the brain and I think um, with a strong with a strong mental mindset, if you have your strong mental mindset, getting in shape physically is going to be no problem. Here we have had many many interviews, Elia, and we we have interviewed more than fifty champions. Okay, and we have asked them questions like, "Have you feel fear before a fight? Do you feel depressed? Do you feel anxiety? Do you feel?" depression what are your feelings about it with this help that you're receiving from your team from anthony from dr silverman are those a uh, i don't know things that i told you about do you think they are less they are less uh, do you feel them less or do you know have you learned to manage them uh so i know uh, i know what you're saying um I believe that, you know, like my past fights, I've had anxiety, I've had the pressure. And even currently with Dr. Silverman, I still get the pressure. I still get the anxiety. But the only difference is now I know how to manage it and I know how to use it in a good way. And, um, you know, I don't get as nervous as I used to. And um, but that, that's the main thing. I know how, I know how to I know how to manage it. And um, I know how to manage it and use it in a good way. I, I could use it to my advantage. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. I, you're only 20 years old, and I hear in your presentation that you are married. So uh, it, the, the, the feel or, or the way of a fighter is you're usually, are usually aggressive and, you know, uh, always going forward. Do you think all these things that you are receiving are helping you also in your daily life to reduce yeah. violence, to reduce, uh, I don't know, everything that is going on around your life, not only when you have a fight? Yeah, 100%. I said it, um, I think I said it a couple questions ago. This helped me out uh, with everything, um, not just fighting, but it helped me out in my household. Um, I know how to control my feelings a lot better, and I know how to, I know how to, you know, go throughout the day a lot easier because of the training. Um, I feel like with the training, 
it, you know, it made like a path for me and I just follow the path every day. And, um, little things don't really agitate me as much. And you know, I've just, I've just learned, I feel like I'm, you know, normal now, you know, I don't get upset so easy. I don't get bothered so quickly. Um, I, you know, I could remember, you know, I could remember a lot of stuff a lot easier. So uh, it, it really has helped me out. Laya, I have a question. A fighter should be in the, what people think, uh, fearless, should be strong, the strongest, should be a, a warrior, should be a, and not showing any, any lack of power, any uh, weak point or, but now you're learning that you can be, you can have a, a little fear if you know how to handle it. Does that uh, change the, the idea of a fighter? Does that change your idea of how you should uh, be seen by your, by your opponent or the, the, the boxing fan? Uh, that's how I used to feel. That's how I used to feel. I used to feel like, you know, every day is a fight. You know, every day is a fight. I thought I had to be, you know, the best. I thought I had to always be that one. I thought I always had to be the champion every single day, right? But I've learned it's more of like an off and on switch where I turn on the switch when I'm in the gym. And when it's fight time and when it's time to turn on the switch, I could become that type of person I want to be. Outside the ring, I could be the father I need to be. I could be the, you know, the, the husband I need to be, the brother I need to be. And I don't have to be this, this mean, this mean guy or this mean guy that, you know, this, this killer, you know, that's, that's one thing Dr. Silverman's helped me with is the off and on switch. And I think that's why a lot of fighters can't, um, they can't compete as long as they want to compete because they're always in that man mindset. And I think that's what, that's, what's going to separate me because, I'm, I'm, I'm different. Uh, that, Dr. Silver has helped me out a lot. Doctor. So wonderful that to hear that from you. And I hope that many boxers around the world listen to your words and learn from you from this interview today. Thank you, Elias. Because Thank you very much. Dr. Silverman. Yes. How can you do this? Are you a magician? What kind of tools are you giving to Laya or, or whomever needs them? <clears throat> um, good question. You know, as I've been in the field of psychology for many, many years, actually since 1980, first as a school psychologist, mm -hmm. now my own practice, I work a lot with focusing and ADD and, and motions and head injuries and all kinds of things. And what's interesting in the field is we can learn to change our 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 feelings and thoughts in, in easier ways with mental flexibility in different ways other than always trying to find reasons or um, what conflicts did you have with your parents or this or this to change. But if we learn proper skills through breathing, through uh, brain training, neurofeedback, pressure on certain acupressure points, um, neuroemotional technique, we can actually mentally learn a lot of flexibility, which is what Eli is talking about. And so that allows us to not be stuck in the way we always or perpetually experience things or feel, but it gives us an out to actually change our brain and nervous system and to see other ways that we can view things and act. And so we have that mental flexibility. So in terms of prevention, you know, mental health, it's so important because as Eli was saying, and you asked him, you know, how does it affect him in his personal life? I mean, everything is tied into our brain and, and mental attitude. Yep. So um, our physical being and vice versa, they reflect on one another. And, you know, we, we as a society, we're doing it better now, but particularly with athletics, you know, the stigma of, of even thinking about um, that I have a problem or I'm not, you know, uh, something's bothering me is you're not supposed to have that, you know, and as recently as more athletes have come out with, you know, th with depression or, you know, whatever's troubling them, some mental problem, um, it's, you know, it's, it's allowing that stigma to, to decrease and fade. 
which is extremely important. And the whole idea here in this, in this talk today is not only waiting if you have a problem, when at that point, you know, it could be worse to treat or help, but looking at mental health as prevention, that we can do things to get ourselves better and train ourselves to be better and go to the gym for our brain, so to speak, through different techniques and ways of training that could be enormously helpful for us mentally, physically, in our personal lives, in the, in the boxing ring, and whatever sport we're involved in. I was uh, listening the other day, and that's something that is really important, that everybody should take care of mental health as you take care of your body or of the food that you eat. or And also, the tools. It is easier to learn the tools when you don't need them and you are in good shape that when you need them what can you tell us about it absolutely if if we're aware of um well what eli was mentioning a little while ago when he was talking about fear or, or tension or anxiety before a fight that he can manage it the idea is that if we have some anxiety you know a certain amount of tension or anxiety before an event that's real important to us is, is normal we need a certain amount because if we're under aroused then we're not going to have that enough tension to really perform well. And if we cross the threshold where we're over aroused, then we're going to decrease our performance. So to be able to modulate that or, or learn to control that yourself is extremely important. But the idea with this is that we can have fear, but it's when we get when it gets out of hand, which is what you're kind of saying, is then we have fear about the fear, then it snowballs. No, it's work. So if we could tackle it, you know, when we're feeling something and recognize that's okay, it's normal, or how do we get this so our physiological system or autonomic nervous system doesn't go into the fight flight, or what we call sympathetic arousal, we can do that in a number of ways, through tapping on different areas that have to do with stress reduction and calming the brain, through proper breathing, uh, called heart rate variability training, where we can uh, get our breath and heart to synchronize together. and um, realize the importance of what we're thinking and how we're breathing and how that we can learn to shift into a better arousal state so we feel better and that's things we've worked on as well so there are things that we could definitely do of course diet is extremely important exercise sleep but the fact is if we take note more about what we're thinking and look at it preventatively we can train ourselves just like we do physically and go to the gym Thank you. I have, yes, I, I, I have a small question. This program is dedicated to prevention. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have many other uh, athletes that go with you already with a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the message or uh, uh, what I want to hear from you is what is the difference between prevention and fixing? Okay, I know mm -hmm. we can fix things because we've talked about it before, but what uh, is the timeline between prevention and fixing when you already have the problem? Well, I mean, that's a good question and it's not a simple, you know, divide there. Um, but I think if we're, you know, again, what I mentioned about stigma, if we realize that, hey, we're not feeling well about something, we can take action then. We don't have to worry till it gets um, out of hand and it's really significant. And to realize that it's okay to do that is good. Now, what would we do for that? Maybe, you know, confide in others, talk with people, um, share some feelings, don't keep it inside because then it, it gets worse. So realizing that you can confide in others, talk with somebody, uh, perhaps talk with your manager, friends, relatives, I'm feeling such and such. And they may say, hey, you know what? I feel that too, or, you know, stress in the environment or whatever it may be. Um, you know, learning some stress defense techniques, you know, either going to somebody who, who specializes in that and give you ideas, you know, how to manage it, like I was saying, so you can do these things at home, just like you, you know, regularly brush your teeth. So there are things such as that, but to recognize that something may be a little off, we can say, hey, let me, I could do something about that now. It doesn't have to turn into this catastrophe or I could realize, you know what, that's that's a normal feeling or how am I going to react to that and learn to adjust my reactions to what I'm feeling. So it's never too late. 
Absolutely not. Okay. And to all, it's also realized, particularly in a sport like boxing, that we are getting hit in the head, or they are, I should say. But basically, you know, that can cause problems. Even if you don't have a significant problem that you're seeing, it can cause cognitive problems, speech, and different things. And there are, there is training that could help a great deal, like neurofeedback, programs like interactive metronome, things that where you can train your brain for neuroplasticity and get it working a lot better. I love it. I love and it. restore it to what it was before any hits. You don't have to be flat on the ground or unconscious to have soft signs that you know you're not performing as well as you did. And to even get screenings for that with things like like brain maps or a quantitative EEG and see areas mm -hmm. that might be depressed and 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 knowing that you know with with proper training that could get a lot better and restored. Yes. Uh, well, I want to. I know your work. Uh, for me, you are one of the best, and I'm very happy to hear all your about your work. And I invite all the boxing community to learn more about prevention, to take this uh, subject very serious, and to ask for help. Maybe Phoenix is far away from where you are, but also you can call WBC, and they will lead you. Someone who is near, someone who is near in your country, but also contact Dr. Silverman for this. And Victor, well, I think this is very important. The conversation we're going to have with Anthony, because mm -hmm. I don't know many managers who invest in their mental health program of their athletes, and I really admire Anthony what you are doing with your athletes and the responsibility you are taking. I don't know, Victor, if you want to ask a question or you can, why do you do it? Are you convinced of the mental health? It's as important as the physical training. Why you are taking this different path than the most of the managers? Well, the reason, the reason being is because it started out with working with Charles Poliquin, a very well known that it's no longer with us, a trainer from Canada. He had over 400 Olympic athletes and while working with them, they would be able to do everything in training, but once they got under the lights and into the big show, some of them wouldn't make it. They would, they would be cut short. So we started looking into things and we came across neural feedback and brain mapping. And then as time went on, we start, I started coming around. I started noticing other athletes that have, were having brain issues and depression. And then we started implementing, we started using them to get with the neural feedback doctors and we started seeing results change, changing. So anytime that I have ever been involved with an athlete, it's always been important to me to look at their brain Take, to look at the blood, where their hormones, where they were mentally and physically. And so that's just been part of my protocol since the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. And then with Dr. Silverman, after dealing with some of these other so-called doctors that claim to be doctors, the best one turned out to be Dr. Silverman. Mm -hmm. Dr. That's Silverman right. has worked with thousands of, of, of individuals, uh, athletes along with with children and adults from all backgrounds. And so what I've seen and what has worked for my athletes is, is preventing, preventing the, the, the depression, preventing uh, overthinking, um, unlocking from being in that mindset that Eli had mentioned earlier on, turn it on and turn it off. So, and I've, and I've seen tremendous, tremendous results even with the preventing and the ones that weren't able to, to prevent coming across, to, I mean, getting depression and stuff. I've even seen a dramatic change in those individuals as well. And right now I have a 12 year old that's, a, that's in sports that is, we're seeing immediately great results with, with Dr. Silverman. And this kid has had maybe two or three concussions already by the age of 12. Wow. Victor? 
Yeah, I think this is uh, it's as important as Anthony said. Uh, you should be aware of your capabilities and to learn yourself, as Elijah also said. So you can turn on and off the switch. And if you have personal problems, because everybody has personal problems, you can switch them off when you're performing on the ring or on the field or in any other place, even at work. I think that's the difference of having tools. It's like having different uh, things in your cars so that you can go faster or use a map or use different things. Uh, how much, how important do you think that the mental health is in sports? I mean, in life is obvious, it's, it's huge, but- it's Huge, it's, 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 it is huge. Your mentalness can take you from being on the top to just falling. And I think we've we've seen it, for instance, with um, Deion Sanders. One time in his life, he hit the lowest, lowest point, and that, that was a football player for the Bronx, I mean, for uh, Dallas, and now the coach for Colorado. He had reached the lowest point in his life to where he, I believe he ran the car off the road in his 30-30 ESPN to now sitting on top of the world. And he's done it all mentally. Mental plays a huge, huge role. You wake up every day, that's going to determine how, when you wake up where your thinking is going to lead you for that day. Dr. Silverman, oh, go ahead, Sergeant. No, I, I was going to ask Anthony, it's not a, como se dice, gasto. A spend, a waste it's of a, money. It's not a waste of money. No. It's an investment. So I, I it, think it's very important this message from you. It's yeah, not it's not, not. It is very, it, it's very important. And, and, and here's the thing, and Eli will tell you, I don't like seeing, look, my boxers are going to get hit. And I'm on Eli all the time because he's young. And I tell him, look, I, I want to manage you. And I, and I want to see you do the best that you can do but I don't want you to be getting hit. I want you to pay attention to what's going on inside that ring because I don't want to see him at 30 years old, 35 years old, not speaking well and start going through depressions and things like that. Because I'll tell you what, two, three concussions, you guys, and a lot of athletes get concussions, whether they know it or not, two, three of those in a short amount of time can really mess you up if you're not, if you're not taking care of it right away. And I'll tell you what, 95% of athletes are not aware of neural feedback and the benefits of it, but it will start getting out there here pretty soon because I'm going to start going heavy to the media yeah, and being able to show them, to show them. And I'll tell you what, Eli had a fight. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Eli had a fight before we had a test. Five days after that fight, it dropped dramatically dramatically then we started getting the treatment and we were able to get that that brain waves and stuff back up to where they were supposed to be and that's what neural feedback does it retrains the brain to go back because when you bang on that brain it starts to rewire even though we don't have wires in our brain they kind of look like little guppies communicating it will start going other ways yes is it plasticity of yes our exactly brain? Yes. Exactly. And uh, we want to be with you. Now that you're going to talk about it uh, openly, about the benefits, we want to be part of that, Anthony. Uh, you can count with, I'm sure, with all UBC, WBC University, uh, of course, all your team. But I think science, science has to be part of the sport of boxing. And and it's not really, it's not really backed up by science. So mental health is a principal issue right now for WBC. And we want to, to be hand by hand with your team. We are already working with Dr. Silverman and count with us in any of the activities you, you want to uh, implement, to talk about it. We will support your 
your voice and everything. Okay? Well, I appreciate that. And, and we will support you as well, because I think this is something that I've been trying to preach and get to the NFL and the NFL is starting to look into things and they're starting to do some stuff. And, and we, we have had a couple managers that have reached out um, where these, this one particular manager is, uh, has a couple champions and those current champions have been to the office and it, and we had seen results when they were using Dr. Silverman. So yeah, absolutely. I'm so, uh, I'm so happy that the WBC has gotten into this. I mean, uh, they're really doing this is really a lot further ahead than a lot of other uh, organizations in the sports It's going to save a lot of lives. A lot. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yes, because if you look at Eli's interviews early on in his career, the way he was speaking, and then after he's been to Dr. Silverman's office, it's night and day on the way that he speaks and he carries himself and how much more calmer he is. Yeah, that's true. I'm moving to, I, uh... I'm moving to Scottsdale, doctor. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to change my address to Scottsdale. Okay. Okay. Come on down. Okay. Eli, I just have one quick question. Now you're number 11 in the WBC rankings. Uh, that's pressure. You're getting into the elite and the big league with a great record. Would you please quickly tell me if you have any problem, any disagreement, anything that bothers in your mind, training or personal life or what do you do? I mean, I breathe. The doctor just explained some of the, some of the tools, but I want the experience that you have. What well, what would be if I am uh, uh, bullying you? I don't know. Just something that. Yep. All right, all right, Francis. Right. Say one of my brothers is uh, agitating me. All right. I I'll, I'll whoop their butt. No, I just kidding. No, <laughs> no I just kidding. But all right, Francis. All right. Say say um. Uh, say me and my wife got in an argument, right? I'm not gonna really, we're not, we both learned, right? Like, I would, from what I've learned, I've taught her, right? And so, you know, we, we talk about stuff, but, you know, we get in, our, everyone gets in arguments. I'm just gonna go outside, go walk around, you know, go walk around, go, you know, I live on a farm, so I'm gonna go look at my sheep, go look at my chickens, and then I'm gonna come back inside, and then we'll end up, and then we'll end up, you know, talking about it again, you know, rather than, me getting upset and then me, you know, me getting upset and getting in the moment, you know, I'm, that's not who I am. That's not what I should be doing. What I should be doing is taking a break, thinking about, you know, just really process it, think about it before, um, you know, someone overreacts. That's how I handle stuff. Um, yeah, that's how I handle stuff uh, for a lot of things. Say if I'm in the gym, if I'm in the gym and I'm um, having disagreements with uh, people, um, I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to go, I'm going to go home. I'm going to think about it. You know, I'm going to take a drive. I'm going to think about it. And then, you know, as a team, we're going to come together and we're going to talk about it. You know, it really, it really don't work out when, if I'm mad at Anthony, I'm, I can't just go yell at him because, you know, that's, and nothing gets done like that. It don't work. You really got to talk, calm down and really use your head before you shoot yourself in the foot. So, well, uh, I think he, this conversation can have a second part. I'm sure it will have it. This is just an introductory uh, part. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to have a follow-up. Hopefully, Mauricio will join us in the next. That would be great. Okay. And I think it would be great that Mauricio, he, he needs to really see what, what you have going here. And how big this really could be. Yes, it's big. It's big. And I think uh, WBC is a pioneer for athletes right now in the. Yes, drug testing, everything. Everything. So I really, really thank you. Uh, we're closing with this program, the Mental Health Month. So it's going to be transmitted the last week of May. But I think we're closing with. Broche de oro, como se dice, like a gold. With a gold ribbon. A gold ribbon. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I thank you very much. We thank you. 
Yes, thank you. That was great. Okay. Very uh, important. Yes. Thank you. I also want to thank you, uh, Alaya. You're a great fighter, and I hope to see you soon fighting for the uh, big belt, champion, green and gold belt, of course. Heck yeah, so, I'm excited. You know? <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, that's the belt I want to win. You know, Every, everybody wants that belt. Yeah, they know. So, I have yeah, one. I, I appreciate. Oh damn, that's nice. <laughs> Dang. I just have a thing. small one for like car, but sometimes I'll that's get a nice big... too. Uh, I don't have one of those. I need one of those. But okay. I thank you guys and I appreciate the opportunity you guys giving me. Anthony McDonald, that's my manager. He's a great manager. He's a, a huge part of my team, Dr. Silverman. He's the best doctor for neurofeedback. Um, he's brought me a long way, and I thank you, Dr. Silverman, and I thank you guys for having me on the show. Um, I'm staying ready. Uh, I'm staying sharp, and, you know, whatever comes my way, I'll be prepared. So appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Laya. Thank you, guys. Superman. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Anthony, thank you very much, Sochil. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Have and, a great day. Uh, I really appreciate you being here, and we learn. We learned that we yep. have to get the tools, that we have to bound, that we have to go to the doctor and get the tools and breathe. Thank you very much and take care of thank your you. mental health. Have a blessed thank day. You very much. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you all. Stars.